Hey guys, I thought I would show you how to use um, loose sheets of watercolor paper. You can tape them down. In my previous videos, tips and tricks, I show you about a watercolor pad and how great they are. But this is a uh, 140 pound, I believe. Yep, really teeny. I don't know if you can even see it. 140 pound paper. It's cold pressed like the other paper I used in the uh, watercolor paper pad. I like cold press because it has a little bit of a texture. So we're just gonna, hopefully you can see this, rip it off. And then I use artist tape. Um, it comes in different colors. It's a little kinder, gentler to the paper, but you can use masking tape. I used masking tape for years and years because it's cheaper. You don't have to buy all the artist supplies to have fun with watercolor painting. So I'm just gonna tape it down to a piece of cardboard. Oh, I probably should show you that. It's just a, I don't know, just a piece of cardboard. Oh, it was the back of one of those pads I saved. Um, you could use a box. And I'll try not to wiggle my art table. All right. And so you tape it down because when the paper gets wet, it buckles and we're not stretching our paper beforehand. You can Google how to do that. I don't, I have never done that because it just takes more time and space and I don't, I just don't do it. So I'm burnishing it with my finger a little bit. You can also take the end of a brush. Just kind of rub it. Because sometimes it'll still pop up, which is why I like the watercolor blocks or the watercolor pads. Um, keeps it much flatter. Sometimes the paint or the tape just doesn't hold it as well. Okay. So, but that was super exciting. <laughs> and then uh, in my downloadable PDF, I have this bookmark project. So, but I don't have the steps for this um, project in my downloadable P PDF, so I thought it'd be fun to paint it. And then I'll show you also how I make a traceable out of it. So I printed out, or not make a traceable out of it, but how I use the traceable. So I printed out the traceable from my PDF file. And then what you could do is put it, tape it to the paper and then put it up next to a window. And then that light shines through and you could just trace it that way. But if you don't have a window that's convenient, what I do is color on the back with a soft pencil. You can use just a number two pencil. So this is an artist pencil, but it's the same as like a school pencil number two, or you could use one of these. You just want softer lead. And I just scribble. You can kind of see through already. So you can see where to scribble. And I don't know if that's gonna shake the camera. I hope it doesn't, oh it does. Sorry about that guys. So I won't do every single one on camera here because you're gonna get the idea pretty quick. Plus it wiggles my art table. So it's kind of like being like a little kid, just scribbling. And then when we trace on the other side, the graphite will transfer onto the watercolor paper. Now I like the graphite the best because a lot of watercolor artists, for one thing, use, they'll do a pencil sketch some of them will leave the pencil on there, on their paper, and some of them will erase it as much as they can. It's kind of up to what you like for your finished look. Um, charcoal doesn't always come up and it smears more. Um, same with if you use pastels or chalk, it can get messy or the graphite's a little cleaner. I think you can get uh, graphite tracing paper 
That's not something I've ever used, but I'm pretty sure you can buy that if you're interested. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off and finish scribbling. Okay, here you can see I scribbled on the back of the traceable I printed. Um, one thing I always forget, like I just a minute ago I was showing you how I was scribbling on top of my watercolor paper. A lot of times my inkjet will transfer the image when I'm scribbling onto the actual watercolor paper. So you might want to do it on a different table or in a different spot. But it's not like I did anything all that neat. But it makes carbon paper basically when you do that. And then I'm going to tape it onto my paper. I don't know why I'm being so careful. I guess I'm trying to get it straight, but then the tape of taping down the watercolor paper makes it a little hard to see. And then, oh, I don't have it ready. I like to use a red ballpoint pen. Uh, you can use any color. The red is just easier to see. And I got a ruler here. And you just start tracing. So the outside line is where you trim the bookmarks. I don't know if I even said these were bookmarks. These are bookmarks. It's a front pod project I teach. It's usually the second project I teach because they're small, manageable. Um, you could do more at home. They're good practice and they're not so overwhelming as a bigger painting. And then this one, Let's get this line down here and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. So this one, I we use tape so you can have a white border around your bookmark. So I'm gonna go ahead, because sometimes it's easier to tape when you can see a line. A lot of times I just eyeball it. But I've noticed that my students like to have the inside line to line the tape up against. And then I won't show you, or I won't film me tracing all these because that would get pretty boring. <laughs> Although it could be kind of zen, kind of calming, you know? Okay. I got a couple birds. Just kind of mark where they are. And then the horizon line. And some just basically scribble pine trees. They may get covered up when I put the background in. We'll see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna trace the next one, so I'll be right back. Okay, I've got everything traced. Oh, a couple things I wanna tell you, I'll put the link to the PDF below. Um, and a trick you can do is, I don't think it's gonna show up with that red pen. Let's try this one. So you can mark where the corner of your paper is in case you take off your traceable before checking to see if everything transferred well, and then you'll know where to put your paper back if you retape it back on. But there you can see that everything transferred. All right. Okay, I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna pretty much work left or right. Um, Cause this one you just color in any color you want. Any, actually any of these you can do any way you want, any color you want. Um, I just show people because when you're learning, if you're new to watercolor painting, sometimes it's good to see how other people do it and then you figure out how you like to do it. Um, gosh, when I used to take art classes back in my college days, we copied a lot of the masters, the old painting masters just to learn from them. So one thing that I point out with this first one is that you can have a green sky and it works. Um, and actually a purple ground. So I don't know if we want to do that again, or maybe I should paint it a different color so you can see it a uh, different way that it can come out. Let's do a different color. Let's maybe do, people like blue sky. 
let's maybe do a kind of a, can you see that? Let's scoot that up. So I just got a little bit of water. I'm waking my paints up, or just this paint up. And actually, I'm gonna take another brush. This is a bigger brush. Uh, you can see my tips and tricks video. I show a little bit more about the brushes. Oh, shoot, I forgot. I forgot, I forgot. Let's take a different color tape. It might be easier for you guys to see. We want to tape this one. So this is artist tape. It's just another color because sometimes that helps. Um, you can use masking tape. It's not a problem. Ooh, I almost didn't leave enough room between... So what that's gonna do is leave a white edge. When I cut my bookmark out, it's gonna leave a white edge frame. Because I'll cut it here, and then I'll have a white edge here. Sorry about the wiggling, guys. I've got my cell phone in a stand. So you can see what I'm painting. And this a little bit. Let's see if we can straighten that back out. start. I'm going to wet my background. So just water. Got a little piece of crud. Okay. Actually, I might just use that big brush too. I don't really need a small one. Use whatever size brush you like. And normally it's a little darker down at the horizon line. I'm gonna lay color down there. And it's okay if it bleeds down. I'm gonna see if I can scoop a little bit of it up. And then Pull it up with a little bit of water, and then you can just be as wet or as dry as you want with it. I'm really wet. You might want to do it a little drier. And a lot of times, artists will have the top or the corners darker it helps focus your attention down into the painting. I got a lot of water, I couldn't see. But I think that's good. I think it's good for you to see how I handle stuff. It doesn't go quite like I expected. What do you think? That's kind of pretty. Probably should just leave it alone. I want the edge to show when I take the tape up. I don't know if you can see it, but my paper is buckling from all the water, but that's okay. We've got it taped down. All right, so what you could do, we have two options. We could go, since I've kind of taped over this one, we could go start painting that one. Or, now some watercolor artists think you shouldn't do this, but you can take a hair dryer and speed up the drying process. So I'm gonna turn the video off so I don't ruin your ears. And I'm gonna hair dry it so we can see what happens. Okay, that didn't take very long at all. It's not completely dry, 
I don't know if you can see the paper. It's still buckled, but it's dry enough. Okay. And then on this one, I painted sort of a purpley blue um, ground snow. I think I might do that again just because I'm going to do bluish green trees. We don't want just a ton of blue. We want a little bit of color. Oh, and this one, I dropped water on it and there blooms. Um, some watercolor artists don't think you should have blooms. I think they're kind of neat. makes clouds. We could, um, we could try it here. I don't know if it'll show because I've got quite a bit of change, but we could try. Maybe help it bloom. Oh, there it goes a little bit. Kind of wake, woke the paint up a little bit. So that's all that is. Alrighty. Let's do a light purple. And then, so on, on the ground, so the sky is darker near the horizon line, but when you're painting what's on the ground, it's darker and gets lighter towards the horizon line. And then you can mix colors. A lot of times I don't have students mix colors because um, they're concentrating on painting. They're not used to the brushes. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. So when I first start, well, I teach beginning watercolor classes in person and I usually just paint right out of the uh, pans because it's easier, less to think about. Okay, so that's gonna need to dry a little bit. Hang on a second. Okay, so let's paint the trees. I just used a hair dryer and dried the purple ground a little bit. So now we want dark color. Actually, should we start with the birds? Let's make them a really, try and decide which blue, and it really doesn't matter. So whatever blue you have, whatever color you wanna do, I could use black. And so birds, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but I'll talk through it. I'll do the bigger one first. It helps them to look, you can do a V-shape. It's not a problem. Sometimes I put a little body on them um, so that they look a little more alive. And then if you get a thick stroke, that's totally fine. I suppose Bob Ross called those happy accidents. All right, let's use that same color. And then for the trees, you just, you can kind of see the pencil line. I'm just gonna squiggle. You can always add more paint. I think this one's our tallest tree. Oh, a little wet, but that's okay. Let me get out the hair dryer and dry it up. Oh, I got my strokes a little close together there, but that's all right too. It just is what it is. And I'll do this one. That's a little wet in it. I wasn't planning on drying it again because I thought it was dry enough. So I just washed my brush out. I'll be right back. Let's put a little more hair dryer on it. Okay, it's the paper's flat now, so that should be dry. Before it had a buckle in it, so I should have known. Um, let's see if we can get some green in here. I don't know if it'll, if it'll show. That's kind of nice. Oh, 
doesn't show a lot, but adds a little interest. Um, so right now our trees are kind of floating. So when I normally paint, I'd mix. Well, here you can kind of see I've got kind of a grayish, brownish, muddy color. Maybe I'll just use that. But you could use brown, you could use black. Um, there isn't, the cool thing about art is there isn't really a wrong. There's some things that can help you, but there really isn't a wrong way to do things. That's kind of wet. That either. So all I'm doing is just adding a little shadow. Kind of anchor them down. I maybe do want that a little darker. Oh, hopefully I'm talking loud enough when I start to paint. I kind of go into my art brain. <laughs> I start talking softer. Okay, well, that's pretty. That turned out quite a bit different than this one. That's fun. So this one I just used a white uh, acrylic pen. Um, there is a white, can you see it? Right here, um, not every set comes with a white. Here, I'll probably show you. It's not very opaque, whereas this is gonna be really opaque, meaning it's gonna pop You'll be able to see all the white dots pretty easily. Um, it's strong. Opaque means strong. Uh, transparent is through, see through. Opaque is not. But here, let's. Uh, I'll wake that up. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. Doesn't even really. I don't know if I've even used it. It doesn't really want to even wake up. Let's see, I'll put a dot someplace where it's darker. Oh, you can kind of see it. Can you see it on the camera? Not really. So shake it with the cap on. Well, let's see if I can get it open. There we go. I'm gonna test it. Because sometimes it blobs. Of course here, oh, there it blobbed. I got lucky. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see that white paint just doesn't even show. Oh, I got a blob. <laughs> Got a big snowflake. I wonder if this has got some problems. Because it really doesn't want to. We'll just pick up some of the paint from there. Should put one over a bird. So if you paint a darker background, then you're going to see the snow more. But that is basically it for that one. I'm going to use the hair dryer so I can uh, take the tape off. Be right back. Okay. This tape comes off really nice. This green is actually better than the red. And you don't really know until you buy them. Um, and you can see now if I trim it out here, I'll have a nice white edge. Lighten it up a little bit. Oh, sorry about the wiggling. I'll lighten it up a little bit later. So this one, um, you kind of shit, you form the tree from the shadow and then just some of the squiggles. It's a birch tree. 
I suppose it could be an aspen if I think of aspens as being straighter. And then you could start with either the background or the tree. There's not a right or a wrong way to do this one. I usually start with the background. And then on this one, which I didn't do on the first one, because you really don't see the pencil line. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm looking at this, I'm going to put, I'll grab a little bit of this. I can make my horizon line. No, it's not. I'm picking up color. I'm not putting down color. <laughs> there. No, that's a little more than I want. I kind of want my horizon to be a little darker. You can paint and touch up and paint and touch up. <laughs> A lot of times when I'm working on a painting, whether it's watercolor or acrylic, um, I'll set it aside for a couple days and I won't look at it, put it in another room or something. Or like put it downstairs so I can walk by it and I'll go, oh, that needs more contrast there or that needs to be lighter there, you know. And you can tweak them, but when you're working on them, a lot of times you don't see stuff until you your brain moves on to the next thing. And I'm really not getting color here. There we go. Little artist tip or trick there. And some people say, well, when is it done? Well, when you think it's done, I mean, that's a very annoying answer, but it's when you're happy with it. I rather like the sky. Even though you don't see as much snow and I got a blob. I might be able to scrape that. Well, probably can't. I bet it's soaked into the paper. I don't think I can probably get that blob off. So I'm going to try. This is a neat eated eraser. I talked about it in my first video, Tips and Tricks. And it's like silly putty. And I'm doing it this way so I hopefully don't shake the camera. But on this one, I don't want to see the lines. I'm also trying to erase. It's bouncing a little. I can see it bouncing up there. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know if that makes you crazy. I'm just going to go for it rather than going slow. You can fast forward the video a little bit if it's driving you nuts because I can really see it shaking in my peripheral vision. Okay, I really lightened my lines on that one. Alrighty. And then... As I mentioned in my first video, I show you my brushes. I really wouldn't use this one. It's awfully big. You could. You could. Or you could use this one. I use this one for if I'm lettering a lot, but you could use this one to make it make some great um, spots on the birch tree. I think I'm going to use this big one. And then we're just going to Maybe put a little color in this one because there's not a lot. So I'm going to grab a little orange and just scribble. I might have to come back and put some of that back in. It's kind of a yellow orange. I'm adding a little because it's dark there. And then I offloaded my color there on my paper towel to lighten it up a little bit. Now on this one, let's just use our black. And if you have a gray, use your gray. If you don't, just blot wa more water, less black. We'll make this the shadows and the uh, patches or the spots on a tree. It sounds funny to call them spots. So let's see, I'll try and do this with just black so I can show you. After I said, let's use our gray. So I'm just going to put a shadow, that's more than I want, on the right side of the branches. So let's, I put a little black in there and I'm pulling the water down and then I kind of run out, add a little black. And it doesn't have to be smooth or even. 
The shadow wouldn't be. Are you still in the kind of bump things? So I just made the shadow a little bigger at the bottom. And that's probably hard for you to see because I really lighten those lines. You can always come back and darken them, and if, it just, if they get too dark right out of the box, don't worry about it. So this one is just a basically a little squiggle branch, so it's going to be darker anyway. I'm not worried about the shadow. I'm just trying to offload some color so I get a little bit of a gradation lighter going up. There, I finally got it. Grabbing a little water, grabbing a little paint. Then we'll do, I can hardly see it, I lightened it so much. Do the right side of this branch. Goodness. That's a little darker than I want, but it'll be okay. I'm just kind of painting a shadow around that place where the branch joins. Okay. Just feeling to see how dry that is. So I'm going to come back with some browns. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some green in my brown. That's all right. I accidentally stuck my brush in there when I had green paint on it. I'm not sure how dark this is going to be. So that's, oh, that's dark. Grab a little water, I offloaded some color. There we go. And we're just gonna scribble. I think we'll have to come back and darken that orange a little bit. I don't know. I'll just, just see how it looks when we get further along. So my brush doesn't have much in it. Just making the tree line back there a little bigger. And you could paint the foreground too. Since this is, uh, I try to keep my lessons to an hour and if I've got three or four students, then the lessons go hour and a half or two hours. So I can try to keep them a little more simple. That's kind of pretty. And the reason I do that is I let the other areas dry and, and then come back and paint. So I can paint over them. I mean, you'll, you'll wake up the paint underneath it a little bit, but not nearly as much. Then I'm just smoothing out, putting a little color there so when I trim it out, it goes up against the trim line. Alrighty. And if you feel more comfortable using this smaller brush, not a problem. Use the brush that you like. Um, I use this brush sometimes because it will hold more water, but it can get me in trouble. I had too much water there. Um, and you can get quite a fine line. This brush is still in pretty good shape. I don't know if you can see that, but you can get a pretty good tip on it. Um, as they get more used and worn out, then you get to buy a new one or just use them for fuzzier stuff. I don't know if that made sense, but I hope it did. All right, so let's go back to our black. I'm going to add a little water just because I can't see it. I can't see how much water I have sitting in there. You could. You could, you could, so you can see it better. Put some black up here. Then you can kind of see better. Can you guys see that better? How much paint of water there is. I don't know that I changed it all that much. Okay. So now I'm gonna to start to just put on some of the birch tree squiggles and patches. And normally, I got too much paint. I want it to go light to dark. And what I mean by that is I want this lighter and I can always make it darker later. 
So a lot of times you're first, you first put the color down. It's always dark, darker than you might want it. And I'm not really drawing the line on the second side. I'm just kind of showing where it is. Let's see if I can scrub out that a little bit. By painting patches, does that make sense? So it's, it's called closure. Your eye will start to close up the shape of the tree by putting all the patches and shapes together. You don't have to outline it to make the tree. going this way. And do you see how that got darker when I went over the shadow? That's cool. You want that to happen. Yeah, I don't know if I really wanted one there after I started that. Oh, excuse me, my nose. So it's springtime here. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, and we got six inches of snow yesterday, which isn't normal. I mean, we can get a little snow in April, but not that much. But prior to that, the grass was green, the trees are budding, so my allergies, and I've been walking outside because I'm not going to the gym with social distancing and everything. So my allergies are going pretty good. So I apologize, I don't even notice when I sniff sometimes. It's pretty rude. Main one kind of here, so we because we kind of have that. If I make that darker, I'll we'll just put a little one. You just play with it. There's no right or wrong way to do it from here. Kind of need something up here just so you can see. I don't know if you can even see that on a camera, it's super light gray. So I'm kind of shading it in. All right, let's go back to the brown. You could just, you could use uh, two different brushes. Um, I've got two containers of water, one for cleaning my brush and then one for um, clean water when I want to grab clean water and not uh, contaminate my color. Maybe add a little more to that. Should we pick a, I don't know what color that is, kind of a dirty brown, dirty orange. Oh, more orange than I thought. I don't know how much of that I want. Is that too dark or is that a good mistake? I think I'll just leave it. Okay. So now I kind of got wet everywhere. I can see my paper. I don't know if you can see it, if I maybe have a shadow. Paper's kind of buckling. I think I'll go back to the patches on the tree and I think I might switch brushes just because I won't get so much water in this one and we've got some black sitting here let's put in some black black and see what have some just areas pop so maybe black here kind of define thicken that out a little bit that's better and then maybe a little blacker here too. Kind of helps to find the where the branch means. Basically, our light our light's coming that direction, which it really wouldn't. It would probably come more that way, but makes it easier easier to think about.
So I'm trying not to, um, I'm kind of wiggling and it's really not making much difference, but I'm, what I'm trying there is, um, like I cloned, those two shapes are pretty darn close. And I want the focus more in here. Let's make that a little heavier. And then I'm gonna keep this one lighter and then I'm gonna try and change the shape some. So I don't clone shapes, because then it'll look more real and more natural, that's better. And then add some dots for texture. That helped. Get some little ones in there. I'm just playing right now and trying to remember to chat. I suppose I'm gonna have to talk the whole time, huh? It's kind of funny. So when I teach, I, I don't talk as much because I let them think. So maybe I should just do the same for the videos, huh? I think I want that lighter up there. I think we need it darker. So this painting doesn't have a huge focal point, but we can control it a little by the darks. But I also want to show those joints. Oh, now I'm just thinking. Maybe I'll go back to a little lighter, more water. Get a little bit darker shadow here. So I offloaded some color and now I'm just kind of blending it in a little bit. We could be about done. What do you guys think? Of course, when I paint these before class, I'm not walking and talking and I tend to, well, I'm not walking here either, but I'm not talking and thinking about what you might need to know so they turn out a little better, I think. A little more detail. I also don't know how much you wanna see. Oops, don't like that. Soak it up a little bit. Does it need a little something there? It's real easy to overpaint. Um, it's just something that you... So a lot of watercolor painters will paint something more than once. Because they'll go, oh, I like this and I don't like that. You know, they'll... They'll learn every time they do it. All right, I keep adding to it. Let's call it good. You definitely get the idea. Now, do you want our background a little stronger? Maybe a little taller? Let's take um, a little bit of brown. I'm just gonna rub it into whatever that is. A little darker than I wanted. Maybe that's good for the camera. Yeah, I kind of like that a little taller. And then... Well, we don't want it... We don't want it as dark as our tree. So I'm trying to guess how much water is in my brush. I 
and how much pigment it is in there. I think that's pretty good. I like that. Okay, I think we'll call that one done. Cool. Oh, and I'd love to see yours. If you want to post, if you can post them in the comments, depending on where you see this, um, you can email them to me. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm still licensing my art. Um, hopefully I'll go back to teaching classes in person soon. And um, I'm also doing pet portraits. So I'm a one woman show. And although a lot of that is slowed down, um, I don't know when you're gonna be seeing this and how busy I'll be, but I'll just try and get back to you as quick as I can. So this one I'm just gonna lighten a little. Actually what I think I'll do first, so a lot of people like this. You ink it and then you color it in. So both of these, I inked just with a Sharpie pen and then I just colored in. So it's almost like coloring with colored pencils or crayons and it can take the pressure off. So I don't know if I'll show you, show me painting all of this one because you can paint it any color you want. Um, but I'll at least start this one and ink it and then I'll show you how to splatter. Okay, so let's ink it first because I can always erase it later if I don't go over my pencil lines exactly. And then you don't have to copy mine exactly either, which I mentioned before. It's a guide. If you like what I do and want to copy it, that's cool. If you don't, don't sweat it. You might have colors you like a lot better, like yellow. I won't use a bunch of yellow in these videos because it just doesn't show up as well. And then on my squiggles, they can be anything. And then I'll have them go over the lines. When I trim them off, the color goes over the edge. And I won't squiggle exactly as I, my pencil line is just a guide. These are just like leaves or they could be flowers, whatever you think they look like. I've got a couple swirls here. Call that a leaf, call that a leaf, call that a leaf. I don't know what that is, we'll just make it a circle. And these are like little, and then you don't have to draw a solid line, you could like hatch. Actually, I like that, I should've done that in my other one. Um, you can add another line for a little depth. You could kind of get sketchy. You could even pencil in that if you wanted, or ink that in. You can do as much or as little as you like. So I don't know if you can see, but I've got some pencil lines in there that I'm gonna get rid of. I'm gonna lighten the trim line. Okay, you could start anywhere you want on this one. Um, I, re I recommend, but it's not even like, just because I recommend it doesn't mean you need to do it. I just, I would start personally with the eggs and the nest because they're most important to me. The squiggles are not so important to me. But really, you can totally start anywhere you want. I'm gonna use my little brush. So we need blue. Should we do Robin's egg blue? It's springtime here. Well, it was springtime until we got the six inches of snow. That was kind of funny. Oops, I can still see a little bit of my pencil. Okay. I'm gonna keep them kind of light. Can always make them darker. Do you remember when I did the in the tips and trick video? Kind of drew a light area and left it. And then Oops, I think that needs to stop there. Um, 
I'm thinking about putting my pen. Oops. I just picked up a bunch of color because I forgot. It doesn't want to draw on the lot on the wet. I forgot that uh, my egg ends here. Let that dry. Grabbing a little water, grabbed a little color. Ooh, that's way too much color. Offloaded the color, grabbed water. When I say offloaded, I just put it on the paper towel. Oh, you can always go super light, let it dry, and then come back and figure out what you want to do. Got kind of a green brown here. And then I'm going to clean off my brush, or you could switch brushes, it's easier sometimes. Oh, I'm going to grab a little black. I was thinking gray there. Oh, I didn't get any. Got kind of a gray brown. I don't know if you can see the brown in my black now. I don't know if my head's in the, in the way there. So we can also let that dry and we can make it darker with another layer. And then, what color do we want the nest? Should we put a little orange in it for color? Maybe this yellow, yellow orange. I think I'm just gonna put a couple of, that's not very dark. Just a couple orange spots. We'll do three. And then maybe, we're going to cover this over, but maybe, probably get totally covered over, but we'll put a little color in there. It's cute. I'm trying to decide how wet it is. Um, maybe I'll work on some of this for a little bit. I'm gonna do a lime green. You use any greens you have. If you only have one green, put some yellow. Oh, we could put some yellow in there. Like I just said, I would don't normally use yellow, but I just squiggled. I just went right over the where I uh, squiggled. You don't have to like stay in the lines or anything. Put a little green. I'll skip just to make it a little more interesting. Um, not so much for you watching me painting, but just so the colors are a little more. Uh, it unifies it, they're all over, and it also makes it a little more interesting to change colors. Okay, cool. That's another reason why you could paint all these in different steps and then go back rather than paint one at a time. <laughs> Let things dry and come back. Um, oh, I said yellow. Let's do a little yellow. You can get a stronger yellow. Oh, you know what? Let me show you my... Do I have it? Oh, I do. So my tips and tricks video, I showed you that you can buy paint in tubes. I don't think I have any tubes sitting here. They come in little watercolor tubes. And this is a cad yellow. It's a stronger yellow than that yellow. I'll grab some of that. Uh, where do I want to put it? Put some there. Put some there. Yeah, much stronger. I think this is a Windsor Newton yellow. You can buy some really expensive watercolor paints. Um, I just show you, you don't have to. You can use the cheaper ones. Put a little yellow there. This is doing better. Let me come back with a little blue. And then I want to get my head down in there. I don't know if you just saw my hair or not. I felt my head touch the my cell phone camera. 
So now I'm being chicken. I'm not getting enough blue color. I don't know if my brush isn't picking it up or what here. Huh. Oh well. I like that. So the light's kind of coming from this direction, even though my white's over there. Because it kind of got away from me. So now I offloaded the color of my brush a couple of times and grabbed some water. You can almost like, I'm almost like using it like a colored pencil. And then I went a little darker down here again. Kind of scrubbed it out. So I'm just putting little dots of color and then it'll bleed where it's wet. And then this one. I just put the shadow there. Cool. You're starting to look rounder. And they don't have to be smooth or perfect. Depends on what you like. Watercolor can be really loose, which is part of the fun. Boy, I don't know what is there. I wonder if I've got like some lotion on my hands and I got on the paper. It doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna put, let the color go down. Okay, let's see if we can do some brown. Let's try out, and, let's see what this is. You can tell I haven't even used that. And since we're gonna trim these out, you can always test the color on there. Let's see how it looks. Oop, got a ton of color, so I offload the color on the paper towel. Then my brush kind of picks it back up. Kind of a neat trick, really. And see all that yellow I put in there? It really kind of disappeared, but still makes it a warmer color. Does that make sense? I think I like that. And then I'm going to take this darker color. I'm just kind of dotting. Does that work? got dark. Oh, that's pretty good. I think I'll leave it alone. I can come back with more color. I keep saying that. And then I don't listen to myself sometimes. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, let's go do some more leaves. So I've got a darker green that I kind of want to use. But it's in my other pan. I think we'll stick with these bright colors. Some of you might like those bright colors. Oh, just dropped my brush. All right, some, some clean water. Let's do the blue-green. See how that looks. Yeah, we'll do that one. All right. I'm just kind of squiggling, trying to stay loose. Ooh, that's dark, but I don't think I mind that. Pick up a little. Totally lost the yellow there. Oh, we're gonna want some dark here. Sort of shadow. Kind of anchor it down. Hmm. 
we're getting close to done with this one. I was thinking for this one, you could put, oh, an inspiring quote, or if you got a book for somebody, happy birthday to your friend. I'm just gonna grab some of this yellow because I lost it. I don't know what it's gonna do. Huh. Put some yellow dots down here, even though it's wet. Can kind of get away with it. I'm getting a little picking up some of that aqua color in my brush, so I washed it and then we'll grab some more yellow. Just kind of lighten, brighten that edge up a little. This is definitely happier. This one's a little more subtle. I like them both. Um, I'm just gonna throw in a little color. So when it's trimmed out, there's kind of a an edge, a color edge down here. Uh, maybe a little more color than I wanted. I'm gonna do the same up here. I didn't do it on the other, oh, I did do it. I did it on this one, but I did it in an aqua color. Just to give it a little more zip. Hope you can see that. I'm pretty sure you probably can't see my outline anymore. All right, I should show you how to splatter before. I don't know how long this has been going on. Of course, you can, the cool thing about video is you can fast forward. All right, so you can use any brush. You could use this brush to splatter. But I tell you, if you've got one of these, here, I guess I'll show it to you first. It's a number six. It's a Utrecht brand. Um, I got it at Blick Art Materials. Um, I think it's a fake sable. But so it's long, so it bends. I'm gonna get it wet. And then let's grab some orange first. So darker colors will show up better when you splatter. So I've got quite a bit of water, quite a bit of color. Um, some of these colors I should tell you will stain. A lot of them will come out of your clothes, but some of them will leave a little stain. So a lot of times I paint in a t-shirt or something. So you just hold it as close as you want or as far as away as you want. Farther away, you'll get bigger splatters closer. Um, it won't go quite as far. Oop, but you see I got a splatter over there on my... Oh, what you could do. That's a good thing that these things happen. I can give you more tips. Cover what you've got going on with a piece of paper. Oh, I just smeared my splatters. Or a paper towel. Gosh darn it. I can tell I don't have a lot of room to work here. Or some more orange. Let's lay that on there. Help hold it down. That was a good lesson. Sometimes those things, when those happen, those are the best lessons. Because I could tell you, but when you see it, you're like, oh, yeah. That didn't work so well. All right, let's splatter a green. That was a little messy, but I think splattering is fun. All right, let's call that good. Got one on my egg. I think the last thing I want to do is I want to put some, especially I got one big one, but I want to put some, uh, I think I'll use purple. And not, not a lot of water, just a little bit. So I want it dark. I'm gonna put some dots on my eggs anyway. Maybe I should put a big one. So it kind of matches that one. Cute, 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 cute. I'm 
Alrighty, get rid of some of these paper towels so you can see what we've got. And then the last one I'm not gonna paint. Um, I've got this in the PDF. It looks just like this. All I did was just paint uh, the colors I wanted and then in a couple of spots I painted a little darker layer over. So there's a little darker purple over the lighter purple so it's a second coat to make the shadows. And then here I use purple for the shadows. So thanks so much for watching. Um, I will put in the comments how you can find the PDF. I'm gonna do it, pay what you can afford. So I've lost a lot of work with the COVID-19 virus and the um, stay at home orders, self quarantining. So I get it, you might not have any money for this right now. So you can just download it for free. That's not a problem, it's totally cool. If you've got some money and you, I'm suggesting a $10, uh, sending me $10 through PayPal, or you can contact me another way to send it um, as a recommended amount. But you know, whatever support you can afford, I super appreciate it right now. And I hope you guys like this. I hope you enjoy the PDF. I'm excited to hear what you think about it. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.